are take a look at this record for the U.S. across President's Cups and Ryder Cups. 9-4-0, and oh, which qualifies him for match play elite level. And how great to have Xander with us, Olympic gold medalist as well. One week out, Xander, we appreciate your time. Most of us know you as kind of a mild-mannered guy. Then we see you in Wisconsin. You break out the victory cigar. You look like a Bond villain. Are you packing the cigar now, or are you going to wait to buy it in Rome? I can't be telling you that kind of stuff. <laughs> Oh, come on, they're, bro. They're, they're, only for, they're only for celebrating, so uh, first things first. First things first. Well, there's nothing like a Ryder Cup to bring up a little European media mischief here, Xander, as you know from experience. And you had a comment last week in which you said that the U.S. team ha didn't have to do anything special in 2021, which was demonstrably true, but everyone seemed to kind of fan it up as bulletin board material for the European team. Does that get old in your position or is that just something you think comes with the territory in this week of the year no i just think it's you know a little bit of context uh, added to a headline would be helpful for our for you know for us tour pros when we're commenting on something but you know when i think if any one of these guys on on either side of the teams captains included when you read something that says nothing special i mean i'm pretty sure that's sort of what you're trying to explain i mean if there were 25 teams playing maybe it would take something more special because there's just so many more variables in place. But this is a one-on-one a -on -one sort of heads up. And when I say something, nothing special, I mean, hit the fairway, you have to hit the green, and then, you know, either make the putt or two putt based on um, what the other team's doing. So to me, that would be something that's not very special. Um, and uh, it, like I said, I mean, it could, it could be something that needs to be done, that needs to be special. Um, you know, some guys are going out there shooting – in the 50s for best ball it just didn't seem like that would be the case with this with the course set up in the rough and, and things of that nature so um i think the, the team that plays the most steady will, will be able to win this one well your final round of the tour championship was special eight under 62 you were absolutely pounding the golf ball but the american golf fan might say hey i just watched the europeans all 12 compete at the BMW PGA Championship and play very well, whereas only two American members, JT and Max, played in Napa. How do you assuage those fears that you guys might not be matched tough next week? Yeah, they, they all played amazing. Um, definitely gearing up uh, at the right time. You know, they, they say try to peak at the right time. And our team is, uh, you know, JT and Max play very solid, which was great to see. Um, but our team's been sort of, Taking taking a seat back and, and resting up. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's too dissimilar for for what our guys normally do going into a big event. Sandra, I've heard a lot of veterans over the years who've been in very high pressure situations throughout their career say that there's nothing quite like the nerves in their first Ryder Cup being on that first tee. Last time around, you were a rookie. What were those nerves like for you? Uh, yeah, it's a out of body experience. It's it's very hard to describe, and it's something that I myself, you know, like to chase um, when I am competing. So, just the stomping, the chanting, um, the yelling—it's just so loud um, and so focused on on sort of your group that it's it's really unique. Xander, a few months ago, people would have thought it impossible that it'd be a live golfer competing in the Ryder Cup. Brooks Kepka is a part of this U.S. team. What's it been like having him back uh, with said team? Yeah, fitting in, fitting in quickly. Um, I mean, he's one of the most majors in the last, you know, five to ten years. If I, I could be wrong, but that's at least the way it feels. So um, I'm pretty sure any team would want someone like someone like BK uh, firing on your squad. So. Uh, we're, we're super happy to have them. And, um, you know, now that I'm in Florida, it's sort of like, you know, we see each other uh, around all the time. So it doesn't even feel like we're, you know, playing on sort of separate tours as everyone's claiming. I'm curious why you match up so well in team competition with Patrick Cantley, Xander. I mean, is it a mesh of personalities? Is it playing styles? What works to make that team so effective? Yeah, just both. I mean, we're, we're good friends. We've been going at it for quite some time now. Uh, in, in the team format, we play a lot during tournament weeks against each other. Um, we sort of, we see we see the, the style of golf in, in a similar way, um, the way we, we play. So that's why I think foursomes is, is so uh, lucrative for us. And when it comes to best ball, I mean, when, when both of us are going, um, we feel like we have a pretty good chance to beat anybody. 
Xander, you got a milestone birthday coming up next month. You'll turn 30. Uh, give us your assessment of your career so far and how you feel about it. The seven wins, Olympic gold medalist. You know, you're officially sixth in the world ranking. You have 11 top tens in majors. How would you assess your career so far? Yeah, I mean, I feel very fortunate to, to be in my position. But, you know, if you're asking me personally about it, I... I think if you ask any tour pro, um, even Scott, he's number one in the world and there's more stuff that he'd like to accomplish. So we just we keep chasing our own tails. And I think that's sort of how we think about uh, our performance at times. And we always want more wins and we always want to accomplish more things. And um, I think that's what keeps us you know, driving and, and moving forward. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy, but. I'm not happy about turning 30, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Wait until you turn our age, then you can complain about it. Were you surprised by the, the noise around uh, Zach picking JT as a captain's pick? It, it seems such an obvious pick, given his record. And even Rory McIlroy said last week that he wouldn't relish facing JT in a Ryder Cup, which would seem to be the kind of guy you'd want to bring on the plane with you. Yeah, he's, he, he's a dog. He fights. Um, we have a few on our team that fight. And um, JT's definitely, you know, I've heard people call him the emotional leader. He's just, he, we, we need more of him on our team. Um, we have a lot of sort of I'd say stoic or calm guys that will push through certain points and in, in certain times of a match. But um, he's the guy who will get the crowd involved. He's the guy who can go up front and, and get the whole place charged up. And it'll sort of feed back down through, through our team. So. No, not very surprised. And once you look at his record of 6-2 and two in, in Ryder Cup, it, it seems like a no-brainer. You called him a dog. It's a great term. Why do you have enough dogs on this team to win on the road, something that has not been done in 30 years? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the matchup, it's, it's going to be incredible. Um, you know, the average age for both teams is 30, I believe. Could be wrong on that. Um, but it's going to be a dogfight uh, no matter what. So um, it'll, be, it'll be a ton of fun. I'm very excited to go over there. I'm sure every, it seems like everyone's super fired up to, to compete and play in, in front of the European fans. So um, we'll just have to see who gets the best of who. You've never played on a losing team for the United States, Xander. Are you confident of keeping that record alive? I'm, I'm so spoiled by my teammates. It's not even funny. <laughs> Well, Xander, it's great to spend some time with you. My suggestion is wait till you get overseas to get the, the cigars, you know, you know, immigration and, and all that could be a little bit, uh, you know, customs can be a little bit tricky. So best of luck and thanks for the time. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me.